Have you ever wondered what's happening under the hood when you run a simple C++ program? How do computers actually process and execute the code we write? In this video, we are going to dive deep into the inner workings of computer. At first, let's try a simple program. If you are familiar with C++, you can immediately see what is going to happen. But even if not, it's not a big deal. Let's dissect. At the first step, nothing really happened. I'm just declaring two variables, x and y. You can see on the right how the memory looks. Variable x start at d8, variable y start at dc. And you can already see something interesting. I declare this variable as int, which is integer. An integer usually takes four bytes. Take a look here. The variable starts at d8, and we have d9, da, and db. These are these four bytes associated to variable x. Variable y starts right after them, in this case, at dc. And again, I have dc, dd, de, and df associated with y. After the next step, the two numbers are going to be stored there. x is 5 and y is 10. I'm using only the first byte. I have 5 and 10. 10 is A in hexadecimal, as we saw in the previous video. The next line, C out, print what is specified there. And you can see it here. x is equal to 5, y is equal to n. I guess there's no surprise there. And the next line, print its summation. There is still x5, y10, but the summation is not here. This is something that you should realize. If as a developer you are going to need to access the summation later, you should create a new memory and save it there first. Let's try another example. In this code, I'm using different data types. For that, I need to include standard in header. I don't have int, I have u int 8. It means unsigned integer 8 bits. We have integer, it means we have some integer number. Unsigned means it's non-negative, it's zero or positive. And 8 means it has 8 bits. In this variable, I can store number between 0 and 255, one byte. Each of them has only one byte dedicated in memory. Next step, 4 is saved as A, B is equal to 2, and C is their sum. Not in like previous example. Now I have the summation stored somewhere. I can use it later if I need it. What's going to happen if I use numbers which are way bigger than the data types associated with the variable? Let me show you. I'm going to save 200 to A, 56 to B. And when I run their addition, I get zero. Let's think about it. Each of these variables have eight bits. We can store maximum 255. That's a maximum value because we have 256 combinations, 256 values, which is 255 and zero. C should be 256. Unfortunately, I cannot save 256 into one byte. What I effectively did is called integer overflow. And in case like that, we start to count from zero again. 254, 255, zero, one, two, and so on. Compiler would probably give you warning in situation like that, because that's most likely not what you want to happen. Always watch your warnings, they are your friends. And now let's try a more difficult example. In fact, the one which is provided by the tool as default. First thing is integer star and x. We call this a pointer. It's a variable which saves a specific place in the memory. As you can see here, our pointer has eight bytes. Would you guess why? The answer is that the tool, the visualizer, the simulator, apparently use 64-bit processor. If you don't know what it means and why eight, check this video about the CPU. The syntax here means in this memory address, allocate space for three integers. You can see from this beautiful visualization. I have stack and heap. Heap is limited by your RAM. You can use as much as you want. Heap on the address 80 contains three integers. I'm going to save number 20 to the first of them. It was not really the first. You should never forget that in C++ we start indexing from zero. So the first element of an array is actually the zeroth one. One is the second one. Before we untangle what will be saved in P, the ampersand symbol means give me the address. So on the right side, we have give me the address of the first element from the X array and save the address to P. Visualizer showed you the arrows. I can see that even in the heap, the element of the array has dedicated four bytes because it's integer. And now I have car. 
two stars means pointer to a pointer. It means that you are pointing to an address of the memory, which stores pointer to another place in the memory. And it might look like that. So I have fruit, which has three elements, where each of the elements is pointer to somewhere else. And as you can see, each of these pointers have again eight bytes. Now what I try to do is to assign word bananas. Every character is associated with a number. If you don't know why, you can check this video. And as a last thing, I'm going to print yum. This syntax p and star means that I'm taking what is at p and we know that p is a pointer. But when I use star here, it means take the value the pointer is pointering to. My p points here, but because I used star, I'm not asking for the p, I'm actually asking for the value which is saved there, and that's 20. So I print 20 and the fruit, the element one of the fruit, bananas. This is what is printed here. Now when we scroll to the right, you can see that there is uh, another character in the end. This character is added to understand where the string ends, because this is just a pointer to some place in the memory. How should we know that we have only these characters and not more? Using this, we can say that the bytes after that are not part of my string. Last line, return zero. This is just a standard way how to end a program. And that's it. Tutor is really great, not only for students, but if you are one, you can check this video with test for bachelor level that will be all for today. Thanks you for watching and see you next time.